Hey, everybody. I'm Jen Garrett. My passion for football and pushing boundaries has helped me to create a successful business using the same performance building principles of the world's best players. Through my Move the Ball book, workshops, and consulting work, I've used the same system to help thousands of people to think and execute like a pro athlete when it comes to business and branding. Now, I'm on a mission to help you utilize those tools and strategies to elevate your hustle and get you across the goal line. So get ready. It's time to suit up, to show up, and to move the ball. Hey, everyone. It's great to be back with you for another episode of Move the Ball. If this is your first time listening, welcome. And if you've been a part of the Move the Ball movement for quite some time, welcome back. As you all know, on this podcast, we talk about business, branding, sports, and of course, how to move the ball. This episode is part of my special Path to the Draft series, where I'm having conversations with NFL draft prospects on their path to the draft. Now, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast, make sure that you do so today so that you never miss an episode as part of this series, as well as the regular show. I've had a great bunch of guests on the show so far for this series specifically, and I've got a great group of guests coming up for this season. All right, for today's episode, Inside the Huddle with us and ready to share his story and talk about his path to the draft is Jerrion Ely. Jerrion is a running back who played college football at Old Miss. During the 2021 season, Jerrion had 133 carries for 768 yards and five touchdowns, as well as 32 catches for 218 yards and two touchdowns. Throughout Jerrion's time at Old Miss, he accounted for a total of 26 touchdowns via rushing, receiving, and special teams. Now, not only did Jerrion dominate on the football field, he was a dual sports star, and he also showed out as part of the Rebels baseball team. Lastly, to share, Jerrion also made the athletic director's honor roll multiple times a very nice off-the-field accomplishment. Jerrion, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jen. I'm excited to chat with you today. I saw you at the NFL Combine when we were in Indy, as well as at House of Athlete in Western Florida when you were there training with Mo Wells, JB, Coach Jones, as well as Coach Seymour with Running Back Academy. All of those guys train the best of the best. Shout out to all of them. They are a great group of people and they definitely know how to help players move the ball and keep athletes performing at an elite level. So let's just start off our conversation there. What were some of the things you were focused on pre-combine and pre-pro day to ensure you would perform well for those as I'll call job interviews. And I use those words because people often refer to these events as like job interviews for that next step in a player's career. I was really focusing on just being the best I could be, being in the best shape, being at the peak of my performance and just being great spiritually. Love that. So let's run things way, way back. You're from Mississippi. When was the first time you picked up a football or suited up? And what about football made you fall in love with it? The competitiveness it takes. So it just takes everyone getting on the same page. And it's a team game. No one man can really win the game. It takes a team effort to win the game. For sure. It is a team sport indeed. Now, in my book, Move the Ball, which my listeners know that's really what sparked this whole Move the Ball movement, I wrote about several lessons and strategies that I learned from football that I picked up watching the kid and being a student of the game since I was four years old. When you look at what football has taught you, and I know you played multiple sports, what are some of the lessons that you've learned being a competitive athlete that you feel will help you to be successful in this next chapter as well as wherever you go in life? It just taught me how to deal with adversity, how to deal with situations in life when everything is going right and things are going wrong. It's a game that has a lot of life skills and teaches you a lot about life. And can you share with us an example of a time of adversity that being a competitive athlete has helped you to overcome? Does it say you get injured, you can't play, so you have to find other things to help cope with that? Sure. And we'll talk about an injury here in just a little bit. But when you look at the running back position, what skills do you think are necessary to play the skill position well? Good hands, feet, and eyes. Good answer. And people have talked about you saying you have quick feet, smooth footwork. You can easily change direction and make sharp cuts that can elude defenders. What else in your mind makes you elite at this position? How I avoid contacts and how I never get hit slightly or square. Okay. 
And you've excelled at being a competitive athlete your life. You were only one of four players to be named Under Armour All-American in both football and baseball. And in fact, you ended up breaking a, the single game Under Armour All-American game rushing record. What was that like for you? What have you been doing your entire life to really just help you to excel above your peers? Just working hard. Okay. Simple thing to say, but it's easier said than done. And so just working hard and preparing for the moment. Now, you were drafted in the 31st round of the 2019 MLB draft by the Arizona Diamondbacks. I know baseball is a sport that you love as well. Talk to us about being drafted, and then uh, we'll talk about you playing college football. Baseball was probably the first sport I ever started playing. I actually had an uncle that played in the pros with the Astros for quite some time in the late 70s, early 80s. A lot of family members on my mom's side play baseball. It's really a family game. It's a game that has taught me patience. Um, it's, it's taught me a lot of things. So let's talk about college football. You were a five-star recruit coming out of high school. You went to Jackson Prep. You were ranked number three running back in the nation. On TV, on ESPN2, you announced that you were going to sign with Ole Miss over schools like Alabama and Clemson. Why did you want to be a Rebel? Well, that's easy. I just wanted to bring some great to the state of Mississippi. Typically, every five-star that comes out of the state of Mississippi normally leaves. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to build something new, you know, start something new. This past year, we had our first 10-win regular season in program history, and, uh, and that's just the start of it. I feel like I was a big part of that. For sure, it was a great season. Now, when you joined Ole Miss and started as a freshman, you ended up running for 722 yards, a team high 6.9 average yards per carry. You ended up being a true freshman All-American team member. What was that like that first year playing college football at Ole Miss? Well, it was kind of unreal. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. We just go win football games. It was a bittersweet moment. You know, I was happy for my success, but overall, I wasn't happy for the team. So. Sure. And as you progress in college football, what were some of the habits or things that you were putting into practice to help you to continue to excel? Just time I put in after practice and before practice. Small things of just like watching your opponent and you know, um just knowing what everybody is doing on your side of the ball. Yeah, it's important to have that bigger picture and understanding how it all is. As you mentioned earlier, it's a team sport. So understanding how all the pieces fit together versus just your individual piece and what you're doing out there. Correct. I believe that life teaches us lessons in many ways, some of them very odd ways. Let's talk about the COVID year from it. 2020 was a year that was very different for all of us in college football and out. What was that year like for you? And what were some of the takeaways you had from that experience? Well, that was my freshman baseball season when it first hit. Mm -hmm. Uh, I only got to play 16 games. I was kind of, I went kind of mad. I was very mad. But, um, I don't know. It was just a time of shock. Nobody knew what was next. Mm -hmm. Everybody was questioning the unknown. And it was a time where I had to really know what I love to do, see what I love to do. Because you really didn't know if you was going to get to do that ever again. Sure. And you ended up that season playing in nine games, 745 yards. You were an all-SEC second team running back. What were you doing right in that year to stay mentally locked in amongst all the craziness and the noise that was going on to ensure that you were showing out every Saturday? Well, football is my safe haven. So whenever I want to get away from the outside world or just want to not think about my problems, I just do something football related and just how I cope with the world. So let's fast forward. At the end of the 2020 season, you ended up undergoing shoulder surgery, which caused you to miss the 2021 baseball season. Injuries can affect us mentally. So what did you do to stay mentally strong during the recovery process and talk to us about that? Just was being around the guys and still being a part of the team, you know? Because it's very easy to just clock out and not want to be around anybody and just be selfish. You just want to be alone. And so were there any particular team members that really kind of helped you stay engaged and, and feeling upbeat so that you were still feeling like you're a part of the team and not just connecting? Well, we just come back. We were a brotherhood and we we're a family in there. And we just, we always look out for one another. And I'm with them every day, pretty much 80% of the day. So mm-hmm. it's always great having them guys. In there. It's tough being a single sport student athlete. What is it like being a dual sport athlete and having to juggle all those commitments? You got to be ready for two sports at all times of the year. Most people just get ready for one sport a year. But 
when you're a dual athlete, you got to get ready for two. And so that means longer days, longer days and longer nights. For sure. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about the 2021 season. As you mentioned, the team ended up having a 10-win season. What was that season like for you this past year? It went by really, really fast. At first, it went by slow. But we had chemistry and a bond that no other team I've ever been on had. I can say that for sure. And what would you say attributed to that bond? Just our leaders. Leadership we had on the team and just our maturity, though. We was a mature team. We was a pretty old team, but not really. Mainly juniors. We had a little bit of seniors. Um, but our leaders, they were a big key to our success this year. Because it was a match me attitude, and you had to be prepared and match everyone else's intensity. We didn't allow anyone to slack or mess around. Whenever we was doing something football related, it was business. No joking around. There was always a time. We had fun when it was time to have fun, but when it was time to do work, we did work. Got to work when it mattered. Right. So one game that I recall from this past season was back in November, Ole Miss played Vanderbilt on the ground. You ended up rushing for 55 yards, scored a touchdown. And then you also had five receptions for 31 yards and another touchdown. What was that game like for you? Yeah, it was a good game. I didn't get the ball as much as I would like to that game, but I can't never do nothing with that. But yeah, it was a good game. It was a solid game all the way around from the ground, through the air, and on special teams. It was, a, it was a very good game. And as you look back at this past season, what was your most memorable game? Most memorable game? Well, I take the losses me in my head more than wins. So definitely Alabama, Auburn, and Baylor. Those are the games that stick out to me. Okay. And, you know, I think that all of life teaches us to grow in different ways. And so when you look back at your college football career, how has that helped you to grow, not only as a player, but as an individual? Yeah, it helped me grow from maturity level. I feel like I'm more prepared to be an adult. I lived on my own this past year, so I've been trying to take the steps that I need to get ready to be an adult. So. Now, in the Sugar Bowl, Ole Miss played Baylor. Didn't quite come out with a W on that one. You had a good game. What was that like for you playing your final college football game? Kind of like my first one. I don't really remember it. It went by so fast that I don't even remember it. I mean, it's kind of like, it's really had to hit me that I played my last college football game. It probably won't hit me until I step into whatever NFL team my goal I'm going to. It's, it's, that's when it's going to hit me. Sure. And you still have college eligibility left. Why did you decide to come out now? I think I'm the best back in a draft, go back in a draft offers what I have for. All right. So the time has come and you've hung up these college cleats and you're preparing for the NFL draft. As they say, mental toughness is a huge part of playing at the next level, as well as just in preparation for the combine and for pro day. What were some of the things that you were doing to ensure that you were mentally locked in over the past couple of months? It's easy for me to get locked in. I mean, I had a pretty set schedule when I was in a big city. I ain't know nobody. So it was kind of like, go work out, go home, go to sleep, do it all over again. So that was pretty easy for me. That was the easy part. Okay. And you had people down, like I said, a House of Athlete and Running Back Academy, those guys keeping you on schedule too and making sure that right. you were I mean, uh, there to perform. If you ain't there on time, JB going to talk for sure. That is for sure. <laughs> So let's talk about the NFL combine. I saw you were in Indy. What was that like for you? You ran a 4.5240, 40, had a 34 and a half inch vertical, 128 inch broad jump. Tell us about that experience. Great overall experience. Just being around the top guys in the class, other prospects in the draft. It was fun, you know. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed competing against them, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just what we do. It's what we was all there to do. And it was fun. I really enjoyed it. And then let's fast forward to pro day. You ended up running a 4-4-3, 40, so definitely an uh, improvement from the combine. What were you focused on to get that better time? Mainly the start of the combine. I was popping up a little bit too early, getting a little too anxious. Wanted to get my top in very quickly when I should just let it just flow naturally. That's all it was. And if a team were to ask you, Jerry, and where, why should I pick you over someone else, what would you say? What you see is what you get. I'm a hard work. Blue collar. I just want to win. That's about it. And at some time, football will come to an end. Have you thought about plans for what you want to do after your professional playing career is over? No, I want to go to law school. Hopefully, I can become a lawyer after football. Well, that is a great choice because I am a lawyer, so maybe I'm a little biased by that, but uh, good for you. That That's awesome. So what I want to do now, Jerry, is I want to take you through my two-minute drill and ask you some fun questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. 
All right. First question is, outside of football, what do you like to do? Play poker. Oh, interesting. What is one thing most people don't know about you? I play poker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what three words would you use to describe yourself? Fun, smart, fast. Good three words. If you had one intro song played at all of your public appearances, what would that one song be? Probably something about Drake. What is the best piece of advice that you've been given by a coach? Keep the main thing the main thing. Good answer. I'm going to flip it now and ask you, what's the best piece of advice that you would give someone? Keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> that was the all right. best advice you're given to me, so I got to give it to them. All right. So the next question is, you're hosting a dinner party and you can invite three famous people who can be living or deceased. Who would you choose and why? If I'm hosting a party, we got to get Prince there. Prince got to be there. Prince? Okay. Prince. Prince got to be there. And then after Prince, Leonardo DiCaprio got to be there. Okay. And that's a must. That's my third guess. We just got to go somebody like off the charts. Steve Jobs. That's a good choice. That's a wonderful group. There you go. And my last question is, do you sing in the shower? Sometimes. Depends. Okay. Well, Jorian, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a true pleasure. And I wish you much success in this next chapter. And thanks again to everyone for listening. And we will catch you next time. If you like today's episode and you have not yet hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do so right now. And also share the episode with a friend or two or three. It's one way you can help me to move the ball. All right, everyone. Thanks again for listening. And we'll talk to you on the next episode. Until then, make sure that you suit up, you show up, and you move the ball. Thank you for listening to Move the Ball. To see more about what I'm up to and how I can help you to move the ball in your business, with your brand, or your career, check out my website at www.getinsidethehuddle.com. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And also join the Move the Ball Facebook group for even more content and to be a part of the Move the Ball movement.